finally burned out. The world is rid of his existence at last. Was he still alive? You could say that. But you could also say he'd been dead for decades. What's that supposed to mean? Biologically speaking, it's hard to say how much was his life. Side effects from the treatment? No. The primary effect. Keeping a dying host alive as long as possible. That is the whole point. But in the end, he grew too dependent on his children. Hmm. As if he had any other way to keep on living. He first underwent parasite therapy before the Soviet Union became his home. His body was horribly burned. Fire washed across his thin, young frame and stole his skin and his throat, even his lungs. Only through repeated therapies could the parasites keep him alive. Most of his life became something the parasites gave to him. And then he lost the ability to die. That is correct. The parasites live on past the host's death, still aiding cell composition. At that stage, there is no way to extract them from the host cells. There is no way of knowing when the last cell of Skullface's body would die. The only choice was to burn the whole thing. And his children, along with it. <laughs> and I am one to talk. When my life is snuffed out, I expect you to treat my body the same way. And when I burn, I will truly be one with my children for the first time. You say there were three English vocal parasites. According to Skullface, yeah. Skullface had two of the English strain with him. You burned both of them. There was an oil fire. I tossed him in. So that just leaves one. And you tell me Skullface said he used it. He said it was very close to me. Very close. One of your comrades. Or someone ordered to kill you. Or he could have been speaking metaphorically. Hmm. Metaphorically? Close to your spirit. Close to your heart. Someone who either loves you or despises you. The second one makes a long list. Whichever it is, act with caution. Skullface implanted someone with the English language strain. Who it is is irrelevant. Why? I tell you what Skullface really meant. Very close to you means you will be exposed. Mm. All the infected here have been given the Wolbachia. Even if the vocal cord parasites infect them now, they cannot reproduce. But if there's a different host among us, host to the English strain... If that were the case, we'd see the symptoms. What about the non-English speakers? We have plenty of those, but the staff use English as a common language. But if that someone has not spoken English yet, and begins to speak it now, there'd be another outbreak. The final mating pair of the English strain must be found immediately. Skullface is gone, but his threat still remains on this base. Do you see what the final mating pair is? With him dead, those parasites are the stain he wished to leave upon the world. His thirst for vengeance in the flesh. Think. Does anyone here bear a grudge against you? Who would target you specifically? The ethnic cleansers that Code Talker mentioned, they weren't Skullface's true goal. All we have is circumstantial evidence, but here's my theory. It was Cypher who started developing the vocal cord parasites as bioweapons, parasitic weapons, and Africa was the testing ground for them. As Code Talker said, their purpose is the ethnic cleansing of only those who speak a particular language. So they could do a weapon of mass destruction to eradicate specific groups 
races, ethnicities, or colonies by the language they speak, or a kind of absolute language control, or maybe a tool for those arrogant fools to build some misguided utopia. I can see plenty of uses for them. However, in practical terms, they wouldn't be as dangerous as you think. Counteracting the parasites is easy, after all. Cut them out of your throat to save your life, or just don't talk. That also prevents the infection from spreading. So if the international community were to find out about them, they'd no longer be the threat they were conceived to be. In which case, their targets would be limited to minority groups as a deterrent or a terrorist tool. It's hard to imagine Cypher developing something like that as a main weapon for their arsenal. That leads me to think we've only tugged on one little thread in Cypher's grand tapestry. An obscure corner of their work, possibly forgotten altogether. In any case, things changed. When Skullface was forced to relocate to Africa and he saw that thread dangling. All the time he continued that research, he was secretly following his own agenda. The ethnic liberator parasites. His English language strain. Skullface said there were only three samples of the English language strain parasite, and I think we can believe him. Bringing his ethnic liberators plan to fruition depended on creating an English version of the vocal cord parasites at all costs. But an English strain would have been useless to Cypher. Worse, it could have destroyed everything they'd built. It was the one type they couldn't allow. That means Skullface was forced to develop his English strain out of sight of Cypher's network. Naturally, he couldn't use the greenhouse facility Cypher had set up and filled with guinea pigs. Skullface must have found some secret place to create his precious few English parasites, hiding all evidence like a man cheating on his wife. Somewhere, an entirely standalone environment. And when his plan entered its final phase, he must have made the place disappear. Some little room could be anywhere, but now nowhere at all. We'll never know where he did it, but to elude Cypher's surveillance, it couldn't have been big. I believe Skullface was telling the truth. There were only ever three samples of the English language strain. Why activate Sahelanthropus in Afghanistan? This is how Skullface wanted things to play out. The Soviet Union secretly develops a new type of nuclear weapon and successfully deploys it in Afghanistan. Revealing the existence of Sahelanthropus results in a return to the glory days of the Cold War. The threat it poses reignites the nuclear arms race between the world's major powers. The demand for nuclear weapons increases around the globe. What if you then introduced a nuclear weapon anyone could get their hands on? Non-nuclear nations, militant groups of all shapes and sizes, they'd all jump at the chance. Soholanthropus was a marketing tool to sell nukes all around the world. But I think it's safe to say that plan was stamped out before it got up and running. The world's intelligence agencies never did turn up anything conclusive on it. After all, Sahelanthropus vanished before word could spread. Everything that's happened is already a fading memory, never to join the pages of history. Except for Cypher. Cypher won't forget. They'll already be working on something, quietly beneath the surface. They'll use the pieces of data scraped together from this incident to build their own bipedal weapon. It'll take them a long time to complete it, but for now, the greed sector have found their new life's work. We'll have to be ready, too. Hewitt's dug up some interesting facts about our skull-faced friend. Nine years ago, he was exiled to South Africa, stripped of political power. The upshots that he ceased being a serious threat, in Cypher's eyes anyway. They eased up on surveillance, giving him an opening to establish his own military unit, one that answered to his will alone. Those men likely had no idea their orders were coming from Skullface. They probably didn't even know the organization was a part of Cypher at all. Anyway, it was in South Africa where he found renewed interest in parasites. And when he discovered the vocal cord parasites, he began to make his plan. Wipe the English language out of existence. 
free the world, not by taking men's lives, but by taking their tongues. In his eyes, the greatest symbiotic parasite the world's ever known isn't microbial. It's linguistic. Words are what keep civilization, our world, alive. There was something Skullface said. America is made up of many peoples, but those peoples never mix. Quite so. One nation, home to hundreds of different ethnic groups. Many of whom stick to their respective living areas. Little colonies, not interacting with other groups. Going out of their way to avoid one another. Their land, organizations, relationships. Thus, the United States of America is no melting pot. It is more of a salad bowl. It is not made up from one people. But for its minorities to function in society, a common ground is needed. Language. Even if the country is not one, no. Because it's not one, a lingua franca is necessary. English. American hegemonism was born from the illusion that English could unite diverse ethnicities. In taking in people from around the globe, America became a microcosm of it. Now the boundaries between it and the rest of the world have become blurred. However different our neighbors may be, English enables us to create symbiotic relationships with each other. If English can bring unacquainted neighbors together in America, this should hold true for the world. This salad bowl that is the world can also become one. greatest wealth is not money or land. It is the number of individuals under his control. Subjects who work, consume, are there to be used as pawns in war. For a capitalist ruler, his people's power becomes his power. You are the same with your diamond dogs. You spin it with your speeches. But what you're doing is bringing as much talent as you can into your little domain. Every person, another feather in your cap. Yes. Since ancient times, every civilization's ruler has had the same idea. When people unite under one will, they become stronger than the sum of their parts. And the one will is the ruler's will. And what do rulers use to bring people together? Language. In the Old Testament, it is written that only one language was spoken in Eden. A shared tongue that united all of humanity. Mankind eventually grew aware of its power, and harnessed that strength to build a tower to the heavens. The mighty Tower of Babel. This angered God, who splintered the language of man, and the tower was never completed. Languages emerged, and the earth was divided as men went their separate ways. Every age is the same. A ruler's first order of business, after conquering new land, is to force his tongue on its people. Ancient Rome, Napoleon, and now Zero. English is wrecking havoc around the world right now. The British Empire tilled the land with war as its hoe, then began planting the seed that is English. Eventually, American capitalism became the new instrument. To play its game of wealth, you only had to abide by one rule, English. By exploiting people's desires, English has become a leash that people gladly wear around their necks, it would seem.
Я ад Э. You disappoint me. Have you forgotten my face? Leave me be. <laughs> you won't respond to anyone else, so I figured it must be me you wanted to see. But now you won't even look at me. Have I not suffered enough? Not until you've eased my suffering first. To tell you the truth, old man, I'm in a bit of a bind. It's about your children. Hmm? You know what I mean? The parasites. The ones that infect a man's throat, killing him if he speaks their language. They must not be allowed to multiply. Hmm. You are allowed to live only in order to help me. But you don't want to, do you? So why not choose death instead? Because you want to protect the Digne and their land from me. <sighs> That's your purpose, isn't it? Don't lose sight of that now. <sighs> It's in your interest to cooperate. Because if you don't... Madness. The parasites can't detect your people's tongue. So I'll just have to resort to more heavy-handed means. I have the greatest respect for your people. I would rather avoid such a thing, but... We don't always get our way. I was born a tiny moat in a mighty tempest. And until those winds abate, all I can choose is how to act when they blow me this way or that. Tell me, code talker. What happens to a man infected with a pair of your parasites? Can they be removed? Can the full-blown symptoms be prevented? It is impossible to remove the parasites alone. They have too close an affinity with humans. Then how do you stop the symptoms from developing? All right. I was hoping for an answer now, but perhaps you just need a little more time. I'll be back soon. I've set up shop, not far from here. We'll be seeing a lot more of each other. If you are close by, then it is almost complete. We're in the final phases. All that's left is to see if I can actually disable a nuke, with the help of your metallic archaea. Once that's done, I won't have to return here again, and your suffering will end. As will your peoples. We're almost finished, Code Talker. Each in our own way. My only regret will be not finishing you. There's nothing stopping you. I'm only alive because you want me that way. Ridiculous. As you wish. My regret is this misunderstanding between us. You and I, our goal is the same. We should be working together, a symbiosis. You do not know my mind. I simply want the Dine bloodline to endure. <laughs> really now, you're just another moat in the storm. How you react to all the slings and arrows, that's what counts. That's why you call those squirming monsters your children. What I have done is forbidden. Forgive me, all of you. The world should be left the way it is. You of all men should know that. Forgive me, but my schedule has changed. The time for grace and good manners has now run out. Please, 
torture will not work on me. Surely you know this. Oh, I have no intention of getting rough with you. You haven't been beaten. Your hands aren't even tied. Just like me, you live in symbiosis with countless parasites. What wounds I might inflict, they'll patch right up. You might feel considerable pain, but I've no doubt you can withstand it. Then what do you plan on doing? I have a soldier standing outside. Nothing special about him, except that he always obeys. I have given him one instruction. Whenever I ring this bell, he passes on a message for me. That message is simply... Go. What is this? After that, though, it gets complicated. The message will arrive at a room. A little bigger than this one. Nothing special. Some of your people are in this room, surrounded by my men. Enough of this. They pick them at random. No regard for age, gender. In that, I suppose, they're different from you. Not as... discriminating. They tied them up, one by one. Blindfolded them. We had to maintain order, you understand? You bastard! Go. When they hear that, my men will pick one of your people and infect them with a parasite. Your parasite. It won't work on my people. True. The vocal cord parasite doesn't respond to your language. But what about... English? An English strain? It exists. A ring of this bell, and they infect one person. If that person abandons the Navajo language, the English strain will trigger symptoms. You monster! So, it's quite simple. Every time I ring the bell, another of your people is infected. Don't do this! I don't want to do this. I'd rather not have to ring the bell. Which is why I'm hoping you will talk to me. What do you want? What else could you possibly want? You know the answer to that. How to prevent the symptoms caused by the parasite. You cannot control it like some slave. Forget the idea. Forget it? Unlikely. I will never tell you. What have you done? You made me do that. You black-hearted... Settle down. Don't use it again. Well, that is up to you. All you need to do is tell me what I want. How to prevent the vocal cord parasite symptoms. Why? Why do you need to know? The adult soldiers at Gwalayamasa are all dead. What? The parasite traveled downstream. How? It would appear that he was involved. Another demon who woke up from nine years of slumber. As a result, the vocal cord parasite spread through the village. I told you this would happen. It was an unfortunate accident. He is becoming an annoyance. He may stumble upon the truth sooner or later, but I suppose that is really of no consequence. One day, he too will pay for what he has done. Black Anna. The real demon is you. You know, this incident made me realize something. You are right. I should have acted with more humility. These creatures cannot be controlled. All the more reason I require a means to stop them. There is no such way. Oh, really? Wait! Don't ring it again. It is up to you. <sighs> Out with it! I see now. There must be more to it than that. What? They are in you. You use this land to breed more of my children. And not just here. No. In pursuit of your ethnic cleansers, you sifted through many language strains, finding hosts, breeding more and more. 
you would have been infected in the process. Infected with countless strains. Uh, most likely your mother tongues as well. Romania, Northern Transylvania. You found that one too. Yes, the Hungarian strain that responds to the CK's dialect. Silence! Black Anna. It is you who shall pay. <laughs> Is this your retaliation, old man? Let my people go and never bother them again. You heard me. What now? <laughs> what? No! What are you doing? <laughs> I am not afraid. I probably have every language strain inside of me. Meaning all the world's languages are already lost to me. But that suits me fine. If need be, I myself can produce whatever strain is needed. And that means nothing to you. If you are infected, you can never again speak your mother tongue. Otherwise, you will die. As will every one of your countrymen. A few words here and there won't trigger the symptoms. And besides, the time is not yet right to show this face in my homeland. Not until my revenge is complete. Now... Stop! We are out of time. I have to get going. <sighs> well... No! Uh. Radiation. It's radiation. Radiation? Of course. So it can be used. But how much? I do not know. Radiation denatures their reproductive cells, preventing them from mating. Same principle as the sterilization technique. The reproductive cells are more sensitive to radiation than the rest of the body. But I have not tested it. There is no telling what mutation could result or how the host may be affected. Not to mention what could happen if this is done post-infection. I don't care. This plan goes into action now. As long as it works, the details can wait. You wouldn't be lying to me, of course, old man. I can guarantee nothing. I owe you my life. My body has been burned on countless occasions, but it survives thanks to your children. That is why I trust you. Then do not repeat my mistake. What's that? In the West, it is said that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. In the East, it is said the man of flesh brings spiritual power to words. The people knew back then that these creatures carry the gospel. They do not belong in our hands. They must not be touched. <laughs> How enlightening. I'll remember that. Consider this my thanks. What are you catch? <laughs> no! <laughs> well then. I'm afraid it really is goodbye this time, Code Talker. <sighs> huh? There. There is no soldier. Huh. Now where did he run off to? Huh? Guess he wasn't as obedient as I thought.
There never was any soldier. So long. You. How dare you! Skullface. Real name unknown. Born in Hungary, more specifically northern Transylvania, after it reverted to Hungary from Romania. While he was young, the country allied with Germany as part of the Axis powers, but later during the war, it came under Soviet occupation. The Hungarians struggled for independence, but the Soviets came down. Hard. Just like he said, time and again, the country was ruled by a foreign tongue. When he was a young boy, he lost his native language. The bedrock for any developing child. His country, his family, his face, his identity, everything was stolen from him. All he had left was his skull. Skullface first tried his hand at espionage during all the chaos from the war. Agents, military officials, and soldiers who operated out of Hungary during the war vanished over the course of several months. This Soviet spy hunt rocked the counter-intel world. Mysterious fatal illnesses, accidental deaths, drownings, people having strokes behind closed doors. Just like Stalin, no one knew who was behind it. But all you need to do was look for who had the motive. They were all taken out by a man without a face. And now we've got an idea of how he did it too. He'd gotten revenge for his people, but he wasn't finished. Skullface defected to the West, eventually ended up with the SAS. That's where he met Zero. It's possible he began planning this whole thing back then. It's hard to say. In any case, Zero made him his XO. He always did have a thing for oddballs. But this one was set to lead a unit no one else would know about. When Zero created Fox, he also formed XOF as a support team. An unconventional special forces unit designed to support Fox, make it stronger. With Skullface given the orders, Zero never even told the boss about it. Nor the CIA, naturally. If Fox was Zero's silver bullet, XOF was the recoil when he pulled the trigger. Just like Newton's third law. While you were with Fox, Skullface was operating behind the scenes. Sometimes as your backup, sometimes as a mole or a scout, sometimes as your cleanup crew. Fox's tail, making sure the mission succeeded and that you survived. We only have his word to go on, but Skullface's goal was revenge against those who'd use language to subjugate people. Those corrupting a people's identity by forcing a new tongue on them. Those using the power of language to control information. Naturally, that set his sights on Zero. To Zero, English was simply the most convenient code. But to Skullface, English was a parasite. And by eradicating it, he'd stop the world from being eaten away. If that didn't work, he was ready to see the world scorched by nuclear fire. To save language, culture, and race from annihilation, he was willing to overstep the hands of the doomsday clock. That is, of course, if you believe anything he had to say.